This conference will now be recorded. Hello? Hello? Hello, students? Good morning, sir. Ah, good morning. Are you able to hear? Yes, sir. Oh. So good morning, everybody. Uh, last class, I have stopped somewhere in the diseases of the gallbladder. I have come. I, 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 I think I have completed uh, the etiopathogenesis and types of uh, gallstones. So we now go to uh, inflammation of the gallbladder that is called uh, cholecystitis. Cholecystitis means inflammation of gallbladder. It may be acute or chronic, or acute over the chronic. So uh, acute cholecystitis is uh, uncommon. It may be mild and may resolve, but sometimes it may persist with sym systemic symptoms like fever, high grade fever, nausea, vomiting, pain in the right hypochondrium and other things. And it could be a surgical emergency. So unless uh, the gallbladder is removed, there may be some complications. So uh, acute uh, is uh, less common compared to chronic cholecystitis. So we will first discuss acute cholecystitis. Acute cholecystitis is diffuse inflammation of the gallbladder, secondary to obstruction of a gallbladder outlet. Uh, uh, you know that the uh, gallbladder is connected to the common bile duct through cystic duct. So the bile drains into common bile duct through cystic duct. So when the cystic duct is obstructed by a stone, then it will be, uh, it will cause acute cholecystitis, just like acute appendicitis, which in 60 to 80 percent of cases caused by obstruction of the lumen by picolith. So just like that, uh, in 90% of cases, uh, acute cholecystitis is caused by stone obstructing the neck of the uh, gallbladder or cystic duct. In 10%, uh, there is no such association and uh, it is due to bacterial infection, secondary to sepsis, uh, burns or other uh, conditions. Pathologically, uh, gallbladder appears tense, distended with bile, greenish or reddish bile, and the stone is uh, obstructing the cystic duct. Seroja is congest congested. There is fibrous exudate covering the surface of the gallbladder. Cut section, wall is edematous, congested, and infiltrated by acute and chronic inflammatory cells. Clinical features first, the, there is a patient will have a right upper quadrant pain, that is the region of a gallbladder, biliary colic, and uh, you may, which may resolve in mild cases. But uh, if it persists, and particularly when it is associated with nausea, vomiting, fever, high grade fever, chills, leukocytosis, then one has to think of cholecystectomy, that is removal of the gallbladder. Otherwise, the complications may, may arise. The complications include MPMA. MPMA is, means pus in the gallbladder, lumen. Pus is because of secondary infection. And uh, yeah, gangrene. Gangrene is there is vascular compromise. 
ischemia due to inflammation will lead to gangrene gangrene is suppurative suppurative and uh, putrefactive infection superadded on necrosis and ultimately the gallbladder wall becomes thin and becomes perforated perforation leads to peritonitis that is called biliary peritonitis bile escapes into the peritoneal cavity and uh, there it causes is is you are generally made by uh, ultrasonography so that is about the acute cholecystitis chronic cholecystitis is more common and almost always associated with stones in the gall bladder stones in the gall bladder is called cholelithiasis and so uh, in inflammation chronic inflammation of gallbladder gall bladder that is cholecystitis is because of a abnormal bile that is a, a predisposing to stone formation that is supersaturation of bile with cholesterol or bile pigment uh, that predisposes to both gall stone formation and also inflammation so abnormal bile causing injury to the wall that is the cause of a, cholecystitis inflammation but it may be there may be secondary inflammation also but primarily it is because of abnormal bile and uh, in some patients repeated attacks of uh, uh, mild acute cholecystitis may become chronic what are the clinical features of for chronic cholecystitis in chronic polycystitis clinical features are not so severe but there is pain in the right hypochondrium region that is the where where the gall bladder is situated colicky abdominal pain in the epigastrium or right hypochondrium usually the patient is obese fat fertile multiparous a female above the age of 40 or 50 so same risk factors as per gall stones Five or six Fs I had already mentioned in idiopathogenesis of gallbladder stone formation. So the same or predisposing factors are present in the case of chronic cholecystitis. There may be abdominal distension or epigastric discomfort after a fatty meal, constant dull ache in the right hypochondrium, that is the region of gallbladder, and also in epigastrium there is a tenderness. Over the right upper abdomen, and the nausea and flatulence may be may be seen. So these are the clinical features of chronic polycystitis. So ultrasonography is diagnostic. You can visualize in plain X-ray gall stones. If the calcium content is high, if the calcium content is not high, you may need uh, 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 contrast medium. or sometimes when the plain x ray may, may show thickening of the gall bladder ultrasonography is diagnostic uh, you can see the thickening of the gall bladder and variation in size of the gall bladder so when you find all these uh, things uh, uh, the treatment is polycystectomy removal of the gall bladder so gall bladder may contain stones and grossly gall bladder is generally contracted small in size but it may be normal or enlarged the wall of the gall bladder is thickened which on cut section appears gray white due to dense fibrosis which may be calcified so this is the uh, specimen of gall bladder which shows thickening of fibrous thickening of the wall the wall is thickened um whitish whitish because of fibrous tissue and uh, uh, lumen contains stones hemorrhagic ulcerated mucosa and all these things
so mucosal folds may be intact or thickened or flattened or atrophied or ulcerated whatever it may be the lumen you generally contains multiple mixed stones or combined stones and uh, uh, histologically if you take a section from the gall bladder wall examine microscopically the wall is thickened by fibrosis mucosa is congested and uh, there is penetration of mucosa deep into the wall of the gall bladder up to the muscular layer to form rukitansky as of sinuses rukitansky as of sinuses i will show that picture this is the section of gall bladder in uh, chronic polycystitis low power view above you can see the mucus glands and the surface uh, epithelium Tubercular or columnar epithelium, a small bit is there, and mucosa is inflamed, infiltrated by mononuclear inflammatory cells. But the deep within the wall, that is where the muscular tissue is there. Muscular tissue can be identified as a pinkish uh, tissue, smooth muscle wall. Uh, that shows uh, irregular uh, uh, glands. Glands with lumen formation. They are uh, these glands are surrounded by muscle, muscle fibers. So this is just the extension of the mucosa in deep into the wall of the gall bladder. So these structures are called Rokitansky as of sinuses. Rokitansky as of sinuses. So that is a important uh, uh, finding. In chronic cholecystitis, and there is variable degree of inflammation in, uh, surrounding the Rokitansky as of sinuses. Inflammatory cells include mainly lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages, and uh, they are present in the lamina propria as well as in the subcerebral layer also. And there is dense fibrosis. Fibrosis may replace muscle muscle tissue. It may involve with the serosa, subserosa. Or uh, subepithelial layers. So this is the low power view of uh, chronic polycystitis. This is a high power view uh, with uh, inflammatory cells and fibrosis surrounding Rutikansky as of sinuses. The mucosa is there. Mucosal folds are there in the upper part of the section. So this is chronic polycystitis. So close to the mucosa lumen, if you focus the lumen, the lining columnar epithelium is there, and that is infiltrated by acute and chronic inflammatory cells. Sometimes uh, the chronic polycystitis may be acute. In acute, you will find the acute inflammatory cells, chiefly neutrophils. In chronic polycystitis, you will find mostly mononuclear inflammatory cells. That means lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. And sometimes polycystitis may be acute over the chronic, acute over chronic. That means both acute inflammatory cells, neutrophils, as well as chronic inflammatory cells, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. All may be there. So this appears to be acute over chronic polycystitis because few neutrophils are nuclear dust, nuclear dust, or neutrophils are also there mixed with chronic inflammatory cells. So complications of chronic cystitis is one of the complications is porcelain gallbladder. Porcelain gallbladder, where there it is a late complication of chronic cystitis, where you will find deposition of calcium in the fibrous wall. Deposition of calcium in the fibrous wall, and the gallbladder becomes shrunken or maybe distended. Or uh, it may be hard because of chronic inflammation, fibrosis, and dystrophic calcification. So uh, wherever there is fibrosis, in uh, long-standing cases of fibrosis, you may find a dystrophic calcification. So gallbladder wall is uh, calcified. You can see in the uh, uh, you can see here uh, right side picture X plain X-ray of uh, abdomen, which shows uh, on the right side. Gallbladder, 
the outline of the gallbladder is visible in plain x-ray this is because of calcification a cyst like uh, structure is there in the x-ray plain x-ray of the abdomen and uh, wall is visible radio opaque because of calcification of the gallbladder so calcification of gallbladder is known as porcelain gallbladder porcelain gallbladder on the other side you will see specimen of gallbladder radiographed x-ray of the specimen of gallbladder which shows clearly calcification of the wall so this is a predisposing condition for carcinoma of the gallbladder porcelain gallbladder is a predisposing condition for adenocarcinoma of gallbladder another condition which is interesting in uh, a variant of chronic polycystitis is strawberry gallbladder strawberry gallbladder uh, mucosa shows uh, somewhat a tiger skin appearance tiger skin appearance with yellow stripes and specks yellow stri uh, stripes and specks so uh, this is the mucosal appearance in uh, strawberry gallbladder it is also called uh, polysterilosis polysterilosis that because this condition is uh, due to deposition of cholesterol in the gallbladder mucosa the mucosa shows a polyp polypoidal or polyp and uh, the polyp contains um, uh, pale appearing or clear appearing bulbous rounded structures the stroma contains macrophages which are containing cholesterol esters they are foamy macrophages which can be seen in strawberry, uh, strawberry gallbladder or cholesterolosis polypoidal cholesterolosis a foamy macrophages within the lamina propria uh, form an intraluminal polyp so these two are variants of chronic polycystitis porcelain gallbladder and strawberry gallbladder now we go to carcinoma of the gallbladder carcinoma of gallbladder cancer may arise from the gallbladder it is rare but occurs in more commonly in females after the age of 70 years so there is always a history of a gallstones or a porcelain gallbladder and bile salts are believed to be play the role of carcinogens now uh, morphology gross uh, the tumor grossly appears as uh, polypoidal or infiltrating tumors may be infiltrating with diffuse gallbladder thickening and induration or there may be exophytic intraluminal growth growing into the tumor growing into the lumen as irregular cauliflower like mass microscopically both types are adenocarcinomas adenocarcinomas the histologically they may vary from papillary to infiltrating glands that can range from moderately differentiated to undifferentiated or poorly differentiated moderately differentiated means there is well formed glands or papillae in undifferentiated there is poor formation of glands sometimes there may be squamous metaplasia or adenosquamous type where carcinoid or mesenchymal variants can also occur how the tumor spreads carcinoma of gallbladder gallbladder if you recollect the normal anatomy of the gallbladder 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 is situated in the inferior surface of the liver it is in the liver bed inferior surface of the liver right lobe of the liver so immediate spread occurs to the liver that is local invasion to the liver yeah then the tumor may extend to involve the cystic duct 
or it may metastasize to lymph nodes in the porta hepatis and distant uh, seeding may occur um, uh, metastatic spread may occur to the peritoneum viscera and the lungs So that is about uh, the diseases of the gallbladder. Most important uh, conditions in gallbladder, gallstones, acute, choli acute cholecystitis, chronic cholecystitis, porcelain gallbladder, carcinoma of the gallbladder. Sometimes cholesterolosis may be also be asked. But these questions carry only four marks or two marks. Now, we go to the diseases of the pancreas. Pancreas is another important structure related to the gastrointestinal tract. It is a uh, it is uh, actually an organ with uh, two types of uh, tissues. One is uh, exocrine, exocrine portion and another is endocrine portion. Pancreas is a leaf-like structure. The head of the pancreas is seen in the duodenal loop and then follows the body and tail. There are three parts in uh, pancreas, head, body, and tail. Head is seen in the duodenal curve or duodenal loop. Tail is close to the spleen. So in between you, you find the body of the pancreas. So on, uh, the, functionally, there are two portions of the function, structurally and functionally, there are two portions in the pancreas, exocrine portion, and endocrine portion. Exocrine portion is comprises 80 to 90 percent of pancreas. It is composed of SNR cells and ducts. SNR cells produce digestive enzymes such as amylase, lipase, trypsin, chymotrypsin, uh, 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 and deliver these uh, into the lumen of the duodenum. These are digestive enzymes. If there are at least 20 digestive enzymes produced by the pancreas for digestion of food. And uh, amylase, for example, amylase di uh, digests carbohydrates, starch, lipase, digests fat, trypsin and chymotrypsin, digest proteins. So, uh, there are a number of enzymes which digest various components of the diet. And uh, the endocrine portion mainly consists of islets of Langerhans, not Langhans, Langhans gene cells, they are different. These are Langerhans islets, islets of Langerhans. These are endocrine cells seen in clusters in the stroma or parenchyma in the uh, uh, interstitium or stroma of the pancreas. So these islet cells secret a number of hormones. Each set of islet cells secret a different hormone. Most important, insulin and glucagon. Beta islet cells secret insulin. Alpha islet cells secret glucagon. So you can see well, we are now concerned with the diseases of the exocrine glands, exocrine pancreas, because we are discussing in connection with the gastrointestinal diseases. Therefore, uh, liver, pancreas, uh, all these structures are important. So exocrine pancreas, most of the exocrine secretions are produced and stored as enzymatically ionic proenzymes to prevent auto digestion. That means I will read out first, then I will explain. The SNR cells store the proenzymes in the cytoplasm 
of vascular cells as secretory granules, gymogen granules, trypsinogen, cramotrypsinogen, procarboxy peptidase, and proelastase. These are activated normally in the lumen of the duodenum by enteropeptidases present in the duodenal lumen in an alkaline medium. So, the pancreatic enzymes are produced by SNR cells. They are pro produced in precursor forms, inactive forms of enzymes. Are, that's why they are called pro-enzymes. Pro means precursor enzymes, not activated yet. They are also called gymogen granules. So, these granules are pro-enzymes uh, known as trypsinogen. That means trypsin is active enzyme, trypsinogen is a precursor inactive enzyme. Similarly, chymotrypsinogen is precursor enzyme, chymotrypsin is active enzyme. So these inactive enzymes are carried by pancreatic ducts and pancreatic major pancreatic duct joins with biliary duct, common bile duct and then a common opening occurs into the second part of the duodenum in the region of ampulla of water. Ampulla of water. So the bile is an alkaline uh, medium. So in the alkaline medium provided uh, in the lumen of the duodenum, the enteropeptidases act. These enzymes are produced by duodenal mucosal cells and they act on pro-enzymes and activate the enzymes. Pro-enzymes are converted into active enzymes. Trypsin, chymotrypsin, elastase, these enzymes digest foodstuffs. So until, unless the pancreatic juice enters the duodenum, the enzymes are not activated. If they are activated means that will cause auto digestion of the pancreas. So that is the disease that produces inflammation. So the condition of acute pancreatitis is because of auto digestion of the prematurely activated enzymes produced by pancreas itself pancreas itself. So, as a result of digestive function, there is inflammation of the gland. Acute pancreatitis is acute inflammation of the pancreas caused by premature activation of these digestive enzymes in pancreatic substance. So, there is destruction of pancreas and peripancreatic tissues. There is destruction of pancreas and peripancreatic tissues. So acute pancreatitis affects 10 to 20 uh, per 1 lakh population in Western countries. The most common cause of pancreatitis are gallstones and alcohol ingestion, chronic alcoholism. These two account for 70 to 80 percent of cases of acute pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis may be mild, it may resolve. It may, it is self-limited, it could resolve. But uh, at the other extreme, you will find severe inflammation that is called acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis, which is an abnormal emergency, surgical emergency. Uh, it is an emergency condition, sorry. It is an emergency condition which could be fatal. So, uh, it is a medical emergency. So, one should have make a diagnosis of um, uh, acute pancreatitis. It is one of the causes of acute abdomen, acute abdo severe acute abdomen, which may enter into differential diagnosis uh, with uh, perforated, perforated peptic ulcer, acute cholecystitis, acute appendicitis, and uh, Mesenteric thrombosis, these are all severe abdominal conditions which have to be differentiated. So, 80% of cases due to 
the presence of gallstones polylithiasis which is common in females and also alcohol abuse which is common in males so apart from these 70 80% of cases rest of the cases are due to some metabolic or toxic causes apart from alcohol drugs like corticosteroids thiazide diuretic azathioprine hypercalcemia hyperlipidemia vascular or poor perfusion in conditions of shock atherosclerosis hypothermia polyarthritis nodosa infections like mumps these are other conditions which are uh, associated with uh, acute appendicitis acute appendicitis and uh, this is the picture just to recollect the anatomy of the gall bladder biliary tract and uh, the leaf like structure that is pancreas and duodenum so a uh, pancreatic duct major pancreatic duct joins common bile duct in the lower end to form a common duct which empties into the duodenum at the ampulla of water that is number 1 at the amp in the region of ampulla of water the common bile duct uh, uh, opens after joining the major pancreatic duct so if there is for example if there is a stone gall stone in the ampulla of water that is number 2 then what happens the the bile which is alkaline which is irritating will enter into the pancreatic duct and there the pro enzymes become activated in the alkaline medium the pro enzymes become activated become enzymes and enzymes digest the pancreas and peripancreatic tissues this digestion causes destruction and severe inflammation that is acute pancreatitis <laughs> so major causes of a Uh, acute pancreatitis is the one is gallstones association with gallstones and association with alcohol chronic alcoholism so we will discuss these two how they produce acute pancreatitis so the impaction of gallstone distal to the site of union of common common bile duct and pancreatic pancreatic duct results in reflux reflux of bile into the pancreatic duct resulting in toxic injury to the pancreatic acini so this is i have already explained the increased the intraductal pressure leads to enzyme enzymatic leakage from pancreatic ducts pancreatic proenzymes gymogens are in a inappropriately activated allowing auto digestion of pancreatic tissue and it is believed that conversion of tryptophan to trypsin is central to the activation of the cascade the main enzyme that is first and foremost activated is trypsin trypsinogen is a precursor enzyme trypsinogen is activated to trypsin trypsin then activates a number of other enzymes like the phospholipase pro phospholipase or uh, elastase um uh, elastase uh, chemotrypsin like that other enzymes are activated by trypsin so that is how the gallstones produce acute pancreatitis but how 
alcohol induces acute pancreatitis alcohol chronic alcohol ingestion may also produce increased intraductal pressure due to a several mechanisms by several mechanism one is it increases the production of protein rich pancreatic fluid which can form solid flux in small pancreatic ducts causing obstruction so normally along with protein by um, uh, electrolytes and water is also secreted into the ducts but in chronic alcoholism only protein is secreted into the ducts not much of water or electrolytes therefore the protein precipitates within the pancreatic ducts and forms a flux solid flux these flux obstruct the lumen of the pancreatic ducts so when there is obstruction there is retention of the secretions and activation of proenzymes to enzymes so this is one mechanism another mechanism is the spasm of the sphincter of od in the ampule of water that also raises the pressure within the pancreatic duct system activating the enzymes obstruction itself activates enzymes and pressure pushes the activated enzymes into the interstitium of the pancreas causing digestion or destruction of the pancreas and peripancreatic tissues and third mechanism is alcohol stimulates snr cells causing premature release and activation of various lytic enzymes so these are various enzymes direct snr injury is also caused by apart from alcohol the other agents like uh, viruses drugs and trauma can also cause snr injury leading to premature release and activation of these lytic enzymes so once the enzymes are activated within the pancreas not in the duodenum in the duodenum they will cause digestion of food when the enzymes are activated and released into the pancreatic tissue they will cause widespread destruction the pancreas contains apart from the snr and ducts it also contains interstitial tissue adipose tissue blood vessels and other things all these are destroyed by various enzymes for example lipases cause fat necrosis lipase fat neutral fat fat fatty tissue contains neutral fat as um, esters of uh, fatty acids glycerol and fatty acid forms a neutral fat glycerol combined with fatty acid forms neutral fat so the neutral fat in the fat cell is split by lipase what happens you will find glycerol plus higher fatty acids so this leads to fat necrosis phospholipases now phospholipases are present in cell membranes so these enzymes cause destruction of the cell membranes proteases proteins are present in widely in intracellularly and extracellularly so proteases cause destruction of pancreatic parenchyma and other tissues also and uh, in severe cases they also cause destruction of the endocrine islets islets of langerhans so when the beta cells are destroyed that will produce hyperglycemia that is diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus that occurs in severe cases when the endocrine islets are destroyed beta islet cells are destroyed diabetes mellitus appears and uh, elastase the another enzyme produced by pancreas elastase and other enzymes produce vascular damage blood vessels contains elastase internal elastic lamina external elastic lamina the elastic tissue is destroyed that means the blood, blood vessel ruptures rupture of blood vessels results in hemorrhage into the pancreas and peripancreatic tissues when there is hemorrhage you will find this tissue is appearing brownish or blackish or reddish 
depending upon the age of hemorrhage. So dark hemorrhages appear within the pancreatic tissue. So all these are events which describe acute uh, hemorrhagic uh, pancreatitis. It is a serious condition, serious abdominal uh, condition. So you can see the, this is the pancreas, specimen of pancreas. Uh, head region shows prominently dilated uh, ducts and uh, parenchyma appears gray white or yellowish white. Yellow, ye yellow appearance because of fat tissue, yellow white because of fatty um, fat necrosis and uh, the fatty acids may be combined with uh, calcium, calcium, forming calcium soaps or calcium calcium precipitation appears as chalky white precipitates, whitish precipitates. So this is a variegated appearance uh, which is seen in the head of the pancreas. But if you look at the rest of the pancreas, the body and tail, it appears dark, hemorrhagic because of intense hemorrhage. I have told you the elastases destroy the elastic tissue in the blood vessels their blood vessels rupture, causing intrapancreatic hemorrhage. When there is intrapancreatic hemorrhage, the hemorrhagic areas appear dark. So this is the appearance of acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. So the lighter areas I highlighted here, head of the head region, uh, highlighted here, you can see here, uh, purely yellow tissue that is normal fat. Yellow white appearing tissue or gray white, yellow white appearing tissue that is areas of fat necrosis. And whitish specks, streaks, whitish, pure whitish appearance that is calcium deposition, chalky appearance. Calcium is deposited. So the cut surface of pancreas in less severe cases of uh, acute pancreatitis shows numerous yellow white cause of fat necrosis. So, this is the gross appearance of pancreas in acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Clinical features, acute pancreatitis, it may be mild, it may go, go unnoticed sometimes, it may resolve. It may resolve. For example, it may be associated with uh, surgery or trauma or mild injury. Uh, but it may be it may resolve. That is one extreme. At the other extreme, you will find severe uh, hemorrhagic pancreatitis, acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis, which is a serious condition. The symptoms are. Severe central abdominal pain, that is the region of uh, pancreas. Severe central abdominal pain of sudden onset after a bout of uh, alcohol or heavy fatty meal, patient develops a severe sudden acute abdominal pain, central abdomen, in the region of central abdomen, and pain radiates to the back, and pain is associated with uh, nausea and vomiting. And on clinical examination, you will find tachycardia, fever, jaundice, sometimes jaundice, and shock. Patient may be in a state of shock, hypotension, and ileus, rigid abdomen, boat like abdomen, uh, rigid abdomen, and discoloration around the umbilicus, reddish discoloration around the umbilicus, that is called Cullen sign, and the reddish discoloration in the planks. May be seen that is called greater nurse sign. So these are the signs and symptoms of acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Ultrasonography and CT are helpful. They are diagnostic. And uh, complications. Uh, complications. First, I will show, discuss the diagnosis. Diagnosis of acute pancreatitis is made by 
elevated serum amylase enzymes. These enzymes, which are intrapancreatic in acute inflammation, they are released. They are released into the circulation. So the serum amylase levels are elevated within 24 hours. And within 48 hours or 72 hours, another, another enzyme, lipase, these levels are also elevated in the blood. So uh, these are the enzymes which are elevation of these enzymes is diagnostic of uh, acute pancreatitis. Along with it, uh, there is evidence of pancreatic swelling on ultrasonography and CT. And liver function tests tend to be deranged. There may be elevation of bilirubin, jaundice, which is reflected in the form of jaundice. There is also elevation of uh, alkaline phosphatase, albumin, and other things. So these are investigations in, which are helpful in acute pancreatitis. In acute pancreatitis. So uh, diagnosis. Uh, he, he, uh, another another uh, important uh, um, test is uh, uh, serum calcium. Serum calcium levels. If serum calcium levels are low, that is hypoxemia. That is a grave prognostic sign. The low calcium levels in the blood are because the calcium is deposited in the pancreas. So that if that sign is present, the prognosis is bad. So management uh, is by uh, physiological support, treatment of pain, shock, respiratory failure. There are other associated findings. I will tell you uh, the, in the complications. Complications, there are local complications affecting the pancreas. Local complications are uh, the development of pancreatic pseudocyst. I will discuss what it is. And second, secondary infection with bacteria may produce abscess. Uh, and the gastrointestinal complications include gastric and duodenal erosions, obstructions of the duodenal obstruction, bleeding, intestinal obstruction, and systemic complications. Systemic inflammatory syndrome appears, and uh, this will result in shock, hypotension, renal failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, hyperglycemia because of destruction of endocrine pancreas, hypocalcemia, peritonitis, inflammation of peritoneum is called peritonitis, and peritoneal fluid may be found in the uh, abdominal peritoneal cavity. So these are uh, uh, local and systemic complications. Some of the systemic complications could be fatal. Fatality rate is high. So mortality is 10 to 15 percent. Of course, it is negligible in mild cases, but up to 50 percent with severe hemorrhagic pancreatitis. That may be due to shock renal failure, sepsis, secondary sepsis, respiratory failure because of uh, development of acute respiratory distress syndrome. And for all this, the contributory factors are being protease in the induced complement. So there is, there is, there are many activated proteolytic enzymes in the blood. So the activated proteolytic enzymes will not keep fight they will injure the blood vessels. They will cause activation of a complement, kinin system, fibrinolytic system. So dissem disseminated intravascular coagulation may occur. So there are various adverse effects may develop because of the release of uh, these active proteolytic enzymes into the circulation. And uh, fat necrosis may occur subcutaneously far away from the site of uh, pancreas. So this is about uh, um, acute pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis.
so i will uh, stop the uh, my lecture here i will stop my lecture here so one is one hour is over um, i will continue in the next class the remaining topics in uh, pancreatic uh, um, diseases that is chronic pancreatitis pancreatic carcinoma and others okay thank you ओके।